This is the Ruiner 2000, a very, very cool looking muscle car, a vehicle that features a top speed close to 120 miles per hour, a cool parachute ability that lets you launch into the air and parachute for a very, very long time, and finally features absolutely amazing homing missiles and up to eight of them, allowing this vehicle to, well, somewhat defend itself against enemies. Unfortunately, once you go through those eight missiles, as you can see, I just have, well, that's about all you're going to be able to do in the Ruiner 2000 that's really that special. The parachute is, it's cool, but it doesn't really do all too much. And one of the big downsides of the Ruiner that a lot of people don't know is bringing your way over to the mechanic shop does not actually get you more missiles. So we're gonna go into the mechanic shop right now. I shot all my missiles, so you'd think fixing it would give me them back. So here we go, and nope, oh, it doesn't. It's actually very unfortunate that is the case. So the only way to get your missiles back on the Ruiner 2000 is to go into your interaction menu, despawn it, and then spawn this vehicle back in. Which, yeah, is not the most exciting thing in the world, especially when you only get eight missiles as it is. A vehicle like an oppressor can fire four times the amount of missiles this vehicle carries. So, if this car has so many downsides compared to a lot of the other weaponized vehicles in the game, I should also point out that this car only survives one explosion. And when I say survives, I mean it blows up after one explosion. So it doesn't, it just dies. Uh, but you might be thinking, what are the advantages of getting the Ruiner 2000, especially for such a steep price tag? Well, there's one big advantage, and this is something that I actually should have talked about in one of my previous videos on this car, where I was talking about why the Ruiner is basically a waste of money. There's one thing that actually does have a decent selling point for the Ruiner 2000, and this is the VIP mission fully loaded. This allows you to spawn in a Ruiner 2000. You can see here, I have started up the mission, and it says enter the Ruiner 2000. So, we are going to make our way directly to where our Ruiner is marked on the map. Here we are, and we have arrived at our Ruiner 2000s. Now, this mission is absolutely insane. Sure, in front of you, it might look like a fairly stock standard Ruiner. No tinted windows, kind of a generic paint job, the tires are still stock rims. Well, here's the advantage. If there's not other people running VIP work in your lobby, let's say you're in a populated lobby, you are able to start this mission whenever you want. And this mission has a 20 minute time before it ends. Now, what the mission's gonna tell you to do is destroy a bunch of marked targets on the map. However, you don't need to do that. That's the whole point of this mission. Sure, if you do it, you're gonna get a decent chunk of money. However, Rockstar has allowed this vehicle to survive a massive amount of missiles and carry unlimited missiles to be able to destroy the turreted vehicles in this mission. But remember, you can do this in a public lobby. That means if you're trying to deal with griefers or you want a friend to protect you, they can very easily start VIP work not inside of your CEO and then chill in a Ruiner 2000 next to you while you're trying to sell your product. Let's talk about some of the advantages you get with the Ruiner 2000 doing the VIP work. As I said, you get a limit of missiles. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And as you'll notice, we can just keep on firing. With the normal Ruiner at this point, we would have been completely out of missiles, but for this mission, no problem whatsoever. The second big advantage this vehicle carries is not only does it have massive amounts of missiles, which is unlimited, the Ruiner 2000 also features the ability to just absolutely tank a ridiculous amount of missiles. Or, uh, whatever really, I mean, if you were to shoot a minigun at this vehicle, it's not like your normal Ruiner 2000 where you're just going to be able to destroy the car. You can shoot at this vehicle all you want, and, uh... It's not really going to do all too much, as you can see. To make it even further more nasty, we can start shooting explosions at the vehicle, and it's not going to matter. I mean, we can shoot homing missiles at it. Oh, there goes my car. Uh, we can shoot RPG rounds at it. It doesn't really matter. I can just keep shooting. I think what I read is it can survive around 25 missiles. And as you can see, I don't know if that was exactly equivalent to 25, because we did shoot some RPG rounds, three at it. Uh, we also weren't inside the vehicle, which does reduce its effectiveness, but here's the best part. Sure, the vehicle's blown up, but now if we take a look on my mini-map, there's another Ruiner 2000 spawned right on the edge of the map. So if we make our way over there really quick, 
you can see we have a fully brand new Ruiner 2000 with still 17 minutes left on the clock. So even if you do unfortunately get destroyed, it's not really gonna matter. You can just call it another Ruiner. This vehicle is, uh, it's pretty nasty in this mission. It is definitely one of the strongest vehicles in a public session if you can use this vehicle to your advantage. Now, I do think that this is very, very strong because not only obviously do you have a Ruiner that can survive like 20 homing missiles, it also, I should point out, cannot be locked on while you're inside the vehicle. So that means if somebody in a Depressor Mark II or a Griefer is trying to destroy you, you can do this mission. You start it right up, get your Ruiner 2000, and you're no longer going to be able to be locked on, which is pretty dang strong and you also have these Mark II missiles which allow you to instantly lock on and clear other people. As I said, this car is pretty dang fast, so at 119 mile per hour top speed, you can quite easily maneuver around the map as well. There's really a lot going for the car. Now, I should point out that your glass on the car is not fully bulletproof, so even though you may think you're invincible with all these capabilities it has going for it, you still should keep in mind that this car has the ability to be shot right through, especially if there's a decent shooter or a modder that just has auto aim on. So do keep that in mind. What I will say about the Ruiner 2000 with this ability is, sure, it looks like this is absolutely busted and there's a lot of upsides going for it, which there are. However, I should also point out there are a lot of downsides that people forget to mention. First of all comes the price tag of this vehicle. The Ruiner 2000 sits in at a ridiculously expensive price tag of uh, like 5.7 million currently. Next update, it's going to be getting cheaper at around 4.7 million, but that's not taking away the fact that this is still an incredibly expensive purchase. I should also point out that it takes an additional 60 minutes to start up the fully loaded mission again. So you do get about 20 minutes of grace period where you're super duper invincible and you get a car that is practically impervious to the elements, you have to wait an additional hour to start it back up, which yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of the car to begin with. There's definitely a lot of people in the comments, especially tryhard players, that are going to argue that if you call in the Ruiner 2000 and you do it at the right moment, it's an absolutely amazing vehicle that can protect you super duper well. And yeah, to a certain extent, I do fully agree with that. The Ruiner 2000 will survive a lot of missiles if you're able to start up the VIP work. It's definitely worth its money if you're going to utilize that one single aspect about the car. But... I mean, it's only 20 minutes. Heck, one single sale mission from your businesses is going to take around 20 minutes. That means that if you want to do any other sale missions, you might just have to wait an hour cooldown if you want to have your friends protecting you with a Ruiner 2000 from the fully loaded mission. As well, if anybody else is starting VIP work in the lobby you're in, you cannot start your own VIP work to begin with. Which means really the only time you're ever going to be able to start this VIP work alone is if you're in an invite-only lobby, which kind of defeats the purpose of using the Ruiner 2000 to begin with. Especially when we compare it to the Toreador, a vehicle that features kind of just everything better when you compare it to a vehicle like the Ruiner 2000. First of all, the Toreador has a speed boost, which is great. It allows you to get from point A to point B very, very fast. Don't get me wrong, the jumping gimmick on the Ruiner 2000 can be helpful in some situations, especially if you want to deal with like an oppressor in the air. You can jump in the air and then get the missiles to aim at the vehicle a lot easier than, for example, a Toreador. But you're so much faster in this car if you're trying to get from point A to point B while helping somebody else out. This is definitely a better option. Second of all, this vehicle features the same missiles that the Deluxo and as well the Ruiner 2000 carry, but you also have an unlimited amount. That means that you're never, ever, ever going to have to worry about running out of missiles when using this vehicle in a public session, which is the whole point of the Ruiner 2000 fully loaded mission to begin with. And finally, this vehicle can survive six homing missiles. It's usually around the seventh to eighth that is going to start to cause you problems and blow up this vehicle. So overall, this vehicle has insane protection, and while it may not be as much protection as the Ruiner 2000 and fully loaded, the fact that this vehicle is just more accessible in a public session, the fact that it's faster, it's got better handling, it can see more people, it's also got the ability to go underwater. I mean, it's kind of pointless that you can go underwater. It's a cool gimmick, but I don't think I've ever once really gone into a public session and then started scuba diving. I'm gonna be real. 
but uh, it still does have that capability. But even with that aside, the fact that this car just has so much going for it, and it's at the upside of not needing to own a special vehicle warehouse to upgrade it, not really having to worry about which garage you store it in, because you can store it in any personal garage you want, it's just a better vehicle. And that's really the problem I have with the Ruiner 2000. You don't have to just start up a mission to have a really good vehicle if you own a vehicle like the Toreador. And the fact that this car cost about the same next update as the Ruiner 2000 still makes this a much better deal when you consider in all the factors. Personally, I just think the Ruiner 2000 is an overpriced vehicle for what it has going for it. The mission is cool, but you need so many factors going your way for the mission to actually matter that I don't think there's a point to actually own the vehicle when you can either own a flying vehicle, which is flat better for dueling other players, or you can own a vehicle like the Toreador, and even if you die once, you can just call it back in, so it's not like it matters all too much. Either way, Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and let me know what you thought about what I said in the comments down below if you agree or disagree, but at the end of the day, it's just one man's opinion trying to help you out. Bye bye